Welcome to Elden Ring. This game probably doesn't need much of an introduction, so I won't really give it one. It's a From Software game. It's the next in the Dark Soulsian series of games. It's open world. It's huge. It's supposed to be really good. It's gotten great reviews. Let's go. Gonna begin a new game. First off, we're gonna have a character base. So each different character has different starting equipment and different stats. I spent like 20 minutes just staring at all of these, trying to somehow divine what would be the best for me. And in the end, I just went with vibes. By that, I mean the vibe of the astrologer just looks cool. I don't know. I like how they look. These are their stats. So they have a peak in mind and intelligence. They have a little bit of dex and then everything else is pretty low. Which, if you know the, ki the kind of character I typically play in FromSoft games, it's usually a dex build. Usually I go for pure dexterity and I don't use a shield and just rely on dodging. So this is going to be completely different. This is very magic heavy. Uh, I am going to use a shield, at least in the beginning. We're going to be very squishy, I think. I assume this is light armor. Usually I go for more of like a medium armor with my dex builds. So, yeah, something completely different. I might regret it. Who knows? But let's just try it. Body type B. Um, I've already played just a little bit. And I made my character already, so I can load my favorite. Wait, hold on. I don't think it's supposed to be young voicing. It's supposed to be mature. Yeah, let's go with that. Otherwise, it's fine. Name. Just going to be me. That's what I modeled the character after. Hence the pink everything. I'm gonna make the keepsake the Golden Seed. A golden Seed washed ashore from the lands between, set to reinforce sacred flasks. So we'll get another flask use with that. Basically, I tried to make the character fat like me, and unfortunately, you can't really. Like, this is as fat as they can go, which is not actually fat at all, just kind of bulky more than fat. But, eh, close enough. Fallen leaves tell a story. The great Elden Ring was shattered in our home across the fall. The lands between. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. Brilliant 
gold mask. Fear the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. And Sir Gideon Othmere. The all-knowing. Here we go. Okay. So when I played before for like 15 minutes just testing things, the first thing I did was go into this corner here, read this message, and it said, let's see if it still says the same thing. I hope it does. No! <laughs> Could this be a dead end? I'll still upvote you. Damn. When I played before, this message said, Seek Pickle. And I just burst out laughing. I'm like, oh my god, I love this. After that epic intro, I go into a corner and someone scribbled Seek Pickle. Like, oh, this is Dark Souls. It has begun. But yeah, the starting area is just littered with notes everywhere and everything is upvoted thousands of times because this is like day one or kind of day two of the release, depending on what region you're in. Try, try fingers butthole. Okay, great. I'm not upvoting that. That gives us the ability to leave messages. Oh, I'm also happy to report that you can still break everything by rolling through it, and the sound effects for doing so are better than ever. I especially love the sound of these little candles breaking. Oh, it sounds so good. Like, I'm not joking, the sound of rolling through this stuff, breaking these chairs and things, does sound better than ever. So good. Chapel of Anticipation. Guess what we have now, by the way? There's a jump! You can finally jump in Dark Souls! Oh, I'm so glad that something made it out from Sekiro. There's no items around here, by the way. I did look before. Just sad messages about how things are dead ends. Or things telling you to jump off. Precious item ahead, try jumping off. Oh, really? Hmm. Runes are the replacement for souls, basically. Something incredible ahead. <gasps> try rolling. Fuck you. All these messages are just trying to get you killed. Try fingers, butthole. Oh my god. Good luck. Oh, thank you. That's nice. Still no head. Is that a sex joke or. Behind head. Praise the Elden Ring. Oh, 
oh yeah, this is the requisite um, early boss fight that is intended to kill you. And I wonder what happens if you survive it. Let's find out. No, I'm definitely not going to survive it, but let's try. Oh god, how do- oh, it did kill me. <laughs> There's just a little delay at the end there. Don't worry, Torrin. Fortune is on her side. We found her here after all. One of her kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. So this beginning part is going to be a bit of a tutorial. I'm going to run through it pretty fast because I've already played through it. I'll just kind of tell you what's up. The combat is very similar to Dark Souls. It's very much in the same vein, but there are some differences, significant differences. We do have two types of flasks. So we have the one for health and then the one to restore. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Maybe FP. That's what it was called in Dark Souls 3. Basically mana, the blue stuff. So that's the same as Dark Souls 3. Brave Tarnished, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. There is fall damage. Not that much, though. I mean, that fall easily would have killed you in Dark Souls 3. Sites of Grace. Sites of Grace are bonfires. Gonna rest just to get my Crimson Tears flasks back. Oh yeah, sneaking. So that wasn't a thing in Dark Souls 3. But you can sneak now. Oh, I did that last time too. Ugh. Wrong weapon. Can't do a backstab with a staff. And I can parry. Let's see if I can get it right, though. It took me so many tries just to get one on these people. Probably because their attacks are actually so slow. No, that wasn't it. Come on. No. <laughs> Not even close. Their attacks are so slow. There we go. That is the one time you'll see me parry in this game and I'll never do it again. No, I, I might, but I don't know. I've never liked parrying in all the previous games, so will I like it in this one? Probably not, but I'll try it. 
teaching me to do magic. Got to switch to the staff to do magic. You did. Mm, what was this one about? Oh, just that you can guard with your shield. Yes. And you can dodge. Oh, let's break some stuff. Like, what am I doing? Come on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What about these? No. Too strong. Oh, beautiful. Oh, no. Some knee height steps. Oh, right. We can jump. Couldn't do that in Dark Souls 3. There's items to gather, which you can use to craft. Mm, fruits, flowers, mushrooms, butterflies, various other useful material. Really curious about what we're going to be able to craft. Roa fruit. What was this one about? Oh, this was about how you can switch your sword to be two-handed. Which basically just will stun people with shields easier, break through shields easier. One thing that I think it'll teach us later, though, that we can do, um, we can also jump and do a strong attack, and that does more poise damage. Whoa. Can I get backstabs if I, like, just run around them in a circle? Yeah, I'm not sure if my angle was right there. Oh, right. Armaments have special abilities called skills. Left trigger. Um, right. Yeah, if I left trigger right now, it does the parry on the shield. So I think I have to dual hand the sword. Yeah. And then my special becomes this kick. Ah, oh, there is a backstab. Like an in-combat backstab. Just gotta get the angle right. Teaching me to crouch. And apparently high grass like this allows you to remain undetected. That does remind me in a very good way of Sekiro. Ah, this is the one that teaches you that you can um, jump and do a strong attack to break poise better. You can also just do a strong attack to break poise better. You don't have to jump necessarily. You just do that. Stakes of... How is that pronounced again? Marika? Not not Marika. Marika? Uh, yeah, these are basically respawn points. They're not sites of grace, so I don't think you can teleport to them. Um, but you can choose to respawn at them if you die. And they put that there because we have our first boss, although it's a very, very easy boss. I think the point of this boss is to teach you... There should be a pop-up in a second, I think. Yes. You can perform a counterattack immediately after blocking an enemy attack. So here's something completely new. Um, if you block, not like a parry, but just like holding your shield up, just normally, 
and the enemy attacks it. Immediately after they attack, you can actually do a counterattack. Check this out. Oh yeah, perfect. One second. Check this out. So that's really new. Counterattacks were not a thing like that. We're just a normal attack hitting your shield while you're holding it up normally without any sort of parry or anything it allows you to uh, allows you to get a special hit. Likely knight. What? Hidden path ahead. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Strength gesture. Right. Um, now that we have a side of grace, I forgot we can. Uh, with our, I can add a charge to the flask because we have the golden seed that we started with. Yeah, you can also do the same thing you can do in Dark Souls Three, where you can decide how many um, FP versus health, like how you want to balance those two potions. I'm going to just stick with what it is now. All health and one FP. Yeah, this thing takes a stone sword key. I have no idea what this is for, but I do not have that key. Use tarnished furled finger to write a gold summon sign. Yeah, so they're summoning and all that stuff just like before. Are you ready to see the outside world? Before that, though, I just want to note every one of these messages is telling me that there's a hidden path. Hidden path. Hidden path. Evil. Just evil. Anyway, let's see sunlight. Look at that view. The first thing I did was just go around to the back of this place. Pick up some fruits and berries and whatever. Check out these birds. Look at them. I'm not going to attack them, don't worry. Beautiful creatures. Bye. And just look at that view. And you can go there. This is open world. Open world Dark Souls. <laughs> look at that creature. <laughs> look at it. Oh, too cute. Can't wait to see all the wildlife. Arteria leaf. Let's kick the skull off into the water. Bye. <laughs> oh, I think those are like uh, little air vortexes that I think will push you up once we have the horse torrent. I assume torrent is the horse that we're actually going to get. I don't know when we get it. 
I think it's pretty early on. I haven't played much past this. Oh, no. oh god. Yeah, I think our traversal in the outside world is going to get a lot easier once we have the horse. Because I think they can jump further and they can double jump. And just all sorts of cool stuff. I'm relatively limited on, limited on foot. But god, it's nice being able to just jump on stuff. Like, I can't wait to just go check out that island. Oh. Visions of lovable sort. Yes, that is a weird way to say it, but yes, it is lovely. Gorgeous view ahead. That's more of a normal way to say it. Try rump. Uh, I'm going to disparage that. I love these random skulls just hanging around. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. That one has like a little light attached to it and it's... It's got glowy eyes. Is that special? <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> I didn't realize that was a thing! Oh, I can't wait to discover all sorts of stuff. So I've not seen much of this game, by the way. I saw some people play the network test for like an hour. Um, that's about it. Like, I've seen the trailer, I've seen a bit of the network tests, that's it. Little dust ball. Well, not dust. It's not dust. What am I talking about? Summoning pools. In each area, you may find effigies of martyrs. These effigies are summoning pools. You'll find it easy to summon other players at these locations as co-op and hostile summoning signs created with small effigies gather at summoning pools. Ah, right. That's how they manage the fact that you can put down summoning signs, but with an open world, then these summoning signs could be anywhere, right? So this is to kind of concentrate them in one place so that people can actually find it rather than spread out over an entire open world map. Ah, yes. There's these little lights that go from these sites of grace, kind of hinting to where you might want to go. I guess telling you the critical path. Of course, you're free to go anywhere you want, but the critical path is over towards that building that it's pointing to. Oh, yeah. There's a map. There's map fragments. You can place beacons of light wherever you want. Right now, it's completely empty except for just the starting stuff we found. And we can teleport to any of the sites of grace that we found. Oh yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays, pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, a path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Now <laughs> oh, there really should have been some maniacal laughter to end that. Come on. Grace's guidance to castles, the home of the decrepit. Oh, didn't mean to skip that. God, Godric, the drafted. It's time you set off, I should think. 
to Castle Stormvale. Ah, Castle Stormvale. Where Grace would guide you. So, you might notice there's a big horse dude down there. I tried to fight them when I was playing before. They're a boss. They one-shotted me. Do not try to fight them. Not yet, anyway. So, I know I'm supposed to go over there, but I don't know. Let's explore around a little bit. By the way, check out these rather normal-looking, I don't know, deer or something. Well, check this out. Okay, come on. Come on, do the thing. I know you can do the thing. There you go. <laughs> what is that? That's so cool. Like, what are they, Pokemon? Ooh, another special skull. So, golden runes uh, are just, like, poppable souls, basically. I just love that they just roll off. Bye! <laughs> I probably shouldn't explore too much before we have the horse, because I think the horse is going to unlock a lot of a lot of places I can go that I wouldn't otherwise be able to go. But I do want to look around just a little bit. Like, I don't know, let's go down here. Erdly flower. Oh, actually, if I go down there, I don't think I can get back up. I mean, I could teleport back up, but... Nah. Let's get the horse. We're definitely meant to have the horse for overworld exploration, for sure. So the golden light is pointing to this building. Church of Ella. You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kali, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people. Selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. Recommendation. You know, if you can spare the rooms, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every customer counts, after all. Come on, we all know you're just drop shipping these crafting kits. Can they give me another recommendation? You know. If you should buy us nah, just the same thing. Essential. The kit costs about the import. Yeah, I do want that crafting kit for sure, because we've gotten so many items that I can craft with, and I have no idea what they're actually used for yet. So, let's get it. We have 600 runes. Costs 300 for a crafting kit. You know what? I'm glad you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. Oh. Um, if you have a crafting kit, you can make various items for materials that you find. You can learn to craft more items by finding cookbooks. There's cookbooks? Oh, I'm so excited for recipes. Containers. I did not do this when I played before, so this is new to me. You'll need cracked pots or other containers to craft certain items. You will not be able to make more of those items than you have containers. Containers 
Uh, container items will run out with use, but the containers themselves will remain. Ah, okay. So it's like... Well, the picture looks like it's showing a grenade, basically. So I guess that's one example of a container. Like, to hold the ingredients to make some sort of explosive. So the items inside will run out, but you'll get the container back. Gotcha. Uh, what was I going to say before? Oh, yes. We have some poppable runes. Let's pop them. No, no, not, not item crafting. Uh, inventory. Yeah, two golden runes. Used to gain a small number of runes. Two hundred. I'm sure that is small, but at the moment that feels like a lot. It's probably gonna be nothing in like an hour's time. What is it? Yeah, maybe I should buy a cracked pot. Uh, a telescope. That would be nice. Oh, some cookbooks. A torch. Shield. Some armor. Some notes. How, what are notes about? Flask of Wondrous Physic. Waypoint Ruins. Does that like mark something on your map? Like tell you a point of interest, maybe? Hmm. Well, I think the cracked pop might be the most important thing right now. Oh, we could buy another. I feel like a torch would be nice. You know, to be able to see. <laughs> I don't know. I'll get one of these, too. How much do the berries that I've been collecting sell for? Oh, the Arteria leaf is rarer than the others. Sells for 100 each. These only sell for 10 each. So, yeah, I don't think you're going to get rich on picking row of fruit. Goodbye. Nice to do business. You know, if you kind of, like, squint from far away, they sort of look like Santa Claus or something. Oh, yeah, there's an anvil over here. So you can strengthen your weapons here. If you have enough smithing stones. They give you one, which ironically is not enough to actually upgrade anything. It takes two to upgrade anything. I think that's really funny that they give you one. <laughs> Just teasing you. Don't you wish you had another? Alright, so what can I craft? Hmm... At the moment, just some row of raisins. Just take row of fruit. On horseback, feed to Torrent to restore HP. Oh, Torrent has their own HP? Aw, and we can feed them? Well, I guess I'll make some. Just make them all, why not? This would reveal co-op and hostile summoning signs if I had two Erd leaf flowers. Can make throwing pots. Yeah, like fire bombs. Knives. Oh, yeah, so this is pointing to... Over there. Another little tumbleweed. Got it. Didn't see it coming.
Oh, they dropped a smithing stone. I think I need more runes to be able to upgrade it, though. resin. Try stealth. <laughs> Good idea. There's a cave here. Mushroom. I think this is where it was pointing to, but I kind of want to check it out anyway. Oh, uh, let's equip the torch. I'll put it in my offhand. Yeah. Oh, I can do a torch attack. Huh. I wonder if that's any good. It was effective against some enemies in Dark Souls 3, like those wormy ones. I was actually quite good against them. The summoning pool is now functional. How dark is this if I don't... Oh, that's very dark. Oh no, puppers! Oh... Mm -hmm. I feel like fire might be good against them because they're animals. Well, let's magic them. I'm sorry. That's not it. That's it. You can jump. They made little whining noises. I'm sorry. Cave moss. God, I'm so curious what all this stuff does. This is all just so... I'm just like little Bambi. I'm all Bambi-eyed. Oh no. I think I heard something. Yeah, there's other wolves. Behold, jumping! Yes! Isn't it amazing? I too am amazed by jumping. Oh! Thin beast bones. Hmm. A cracked pot. Nice. Could this be a precious item? No. Oh, so satisfying. Oh my god, yes. Oh yeah, the torch is effective against him. Glowstone? Hidden path, oh hidden path. Didn't expect hidden path. There's no hidden path. I'm also not actually sure how hidden paths are activated. Like, I don't know if you need to use them or attack them. Silver firefly. Visions of bug. Yoink. Yoink. 
love that you can jump. You can jump. Lump of flesh? Ew. Fingers. Head. <laughs> yes, that is the head. Oh, good one. Be wary of strong foe. Hmm. Let's restore my FP. Let's get the shield. Oh, wow, that is dark. Oh, there's a fog wall. Ooh. Be wary of ranged battle. Try parrying. Try jump attack. Ooh, I'm scared. I have 600... I have 600 souls. Oh, can I... I think when you're in a dungeon, you can't... Yeah, I can't teleport out to Sites of Grace from inside of a dungeon. Hmm. Ah, let's go for it. Beastman of Farum... Farum Azula. Oh. Oh. <sighs> okay, well, this is highly effective. I'm not going to quite have the FP to kill them, though. No, I'm out now. Got him! Magic for the win! That would have been way harder in melee, I'm pretty sure. Flame Drake Talisman. What is that? Boosts fire damage negation. Uh, how do I use it? Talisman depicting a red ancient dragon. Boosts fire damage negation. The ancient dragons who ruled in the prehistoric era before the Erd Tree would protect their lord as a wall of living rock. And so it is that the shape of the dragon has become symbolic of all manner of protections. No idea what to do with that, though. Oh yeah, this note. Note sold by a nomadic merchant imparting knowledge in brief. Someone lurks among the waypoint ruins on the roads through Limgrave. I think it might just be the actual text that's valuable. I don't think it actually does anything to the map or like adds a waypoint. Someone lurks amongst the ruins. So search ruins is what I get from that. Oh, I love how that looks. That little, like... That little wisp of energy. Return to entrance. Oh! There's like teleports back to the entrance to get you out quickly. Oh, that's really nice. Praise the hidden path. 
Fuck you. Head. Okay, that's just really funny. To jump on them. And just <laughs> mark the head. <laughs> Anything else here? Try crouching. Hmm, I see. The enemies are back. Oh yeah, there's a um, day-night cycle. Now it's raining, now it's... Well, I don't know if it's darker because, like, it's later at night or if it's just because it's raining. But yeah, darker, gloomier. Rain. Oh, these skulls really stand out when it's darker. Oh, there's a sight of grace up there. Uh, I don't think I want to fight those. Are they... chasing something? Are they chasing the wildlife, or are they just... just vrooming around? I think they're just vibing out there. Let's give these ruins a wide berth. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Can you offer me a dictionary so I know what that means? Of the finger maidens. They serve the two fingers, offering guidance and aid to the tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of maiden. Turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Sure. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Spectral Steed Whistle. Ah! <gasps> Do we have the horse now? Torrent? Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. 
Yes. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. I will, don't you worry. I'm going to feed them so many berries. Okay, well, for now, I think this is a good place to end this episode. Hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.